It's the 2K Sports pregame show. Hello, basketball fans. I'm Ernie Johnson, welcoming you to 2K Sports. I'm here with Kenny the Jet Smith and Shaquille O'Neal. Tonight, it'll be the Chicago Bulls up against the Milwaukee Bucks. Last game for Milwaukee, they picked up the W against Brooklyn. After dropping their first matchup with this squad, they won the last one, looking to break the tie tonight. And now around the halfway point, the novelty of the new season has died down, and we're still a long way from the playoffs. Shaq, how do the players maintain focus through this stretch? How do you maintain focus? Well, Have easy. you maintained well, focus? Easy. You're a pro, Ernie. Do yeah. your job. That's your job. There you go. You know, and, and, and not only that, you got to be a real competitor. you got to want to compete. Yeah. yeah, good coaching, and the veterans can help you through this because the veterans have been here before. They can kind of lead you and guide you. Do you feel focused right now? Uh, not at all. Yeah. Do you feel focused right now? Never. No, well, that makes three of us. Here's Kevin Harlan. He's always focused. Oh, say does that star spangle banner yet wave over the land? the place they call the United Center in Chicago the home of the Bulls where today we'll be broadcasting live I'm Kevin Harlan joined by the talented analyst tandem of Greg Anthony and Chris Weber David Aldridge is on our sideline the Milwaukee Bucks come into this one after the win against the Nets and they finished that one out up four competitive but ultimately they prevail yeah and in that game we saw a lot of sloppy play from the opposing offense. They coughed the ball up. A lot of unforced turnovers. Well, I thought they lacked focus. They took too many unnecessary chances. Just a ton of mistakes all the way around for everyone. Well, as we go deeper into the season, we see some teams, Chris, really start to shuffle things around with injuries. And uh, What's it like playing on a team that is dealing with a lot of players that are injured? It's frustrating. You don't know how much confidence to have in your team. You don't know what to believe in, what not to believe in. Uh, rehabilitation is one of the most frustrating parts of playing in the game because it's boring. It's monotonous. Uh, you just continue to do the same thing every day. You start to feel kind of disconnected from your team and, and you kind of start feeling down and bad. And so that feeling can become contagious on a team with injuries because you really honestly know that there's nothing else you can do but wait to heal. And so that, that's really frustrating. So being on a team with a lot of players injured, it's just frustrating. The only thing you can do is to encourage those players that are getting playing time to use this time to improve their game so that when everyone does come back hopefully some good will come out of it all fueled up and ready to go brought to you by Gatorade let's check out who's on the floor setting the floor for the Bucks. Chris Middleton is out there with Antetokounmpo then there's Bledsoe then it's Brooke Lopez and it's Brogdon in at the two guard spot and Bledsoe here we go banked in off the glass and setting the tone early with a strong move to the rack. Well, you'd like to see a little more physical nature on defense. You have to make him earn those points at the strike. Now, here's Dunn. He's coming off a 10-point game against the Lakers. Here's Parker and the dunk by Parker. He gives up a lot of size to most other power fours, but not too many of them can fly like he can. Bulls on D. They couldn't put the pieces together, losing the last matchup with the Lakers. And, you know, you, you have to feel terrible about how that thing turned out. I mean, the game was really going about as expected until they just gave up that huge surge there late in the game, totally lost momentum, and ended up losing that one. Now here's Middleton. 
14 points from him the last game against Brooklyn. Oh, Kevin, and four steals on the night. He relished being a major disruption on the defensive end. Good work there as it goes. Nice way to start the evening. His number's getting called, and for good reason. Well, yeah, he's a guy who can carry you for stretches, long stretches in this game. You want to get him involved early and off. Adetokounmpo against Parker. On the wing, Levine. Lopez a screen. He got right to the cup using that screen. Oh, he took a terrific angle right there off the screen. Something they work on every day in practice. Lopez a screen in the corner. Middleton with it. Bloodsoe outside. Let's it fly. That shot off. Now Chicago takes it the other way. They lost the last time they faced the Bucks. That one in Milwaukee. And they couldn't get stops when they needed to. The opposition just too comfortable shooting the basketball. And that's what can happen on the road. You have to be aggressive and try to disrupt them out of their normal routine. Here's Bledsoe. He picked up 15 points in their last win against Brooklyn. And it was not a one-man show. That was the best part. He had just as good a game with his passing as he did with his scoring. And Middleton kicks to Lopez. Over Lopez. Lopez, no luck. Chicago leading. Here's Parker, and a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. It goes on Eric Bledsoe. And Greg, when Jabari Parker is healthy, he has shown that he can be a go-to scorer in this league. Parker reminds me a bit of how Carmelo Anthony looked at the same age. His ability to just blow by defenders is going to always be something he can lean on. Just fantastic with how efficient he is at this age. And the first one drops. And you look at the Bucks in this roster, and the one constant at every position, length. I mean, great height and wingspan. Giannis and Maker, just to name a few. That misses, so he splits the free throws. And when so much of the NBA is trying to capitalize, Greg, on small ball, the Bucks said they're going to go for tall ball if they can make it work. <laughs> and what the length and height gives the Bucks is a, a few things. One, you get matchup advantages at least at a few positions on the floor. Great coverage in the passing lanes. And remember now, the game, the half court is much bigger because of the impact of the three-point shot. You need size, skill, and activity to be able to guard that far from the basket. Bucks on defense. They trail by three. Levine scored the basket, his second of two attempts. Hey, look, he's not an easy man to defend. He'll get his points one way or another. Bloodsoe with it. He isn't playing a big part of their offensive scheme, averaging around 15 and a half points a game. Pass to Lopez. Back to Bloodsoe. And he can't stop the run as he misses. The Bulls leading by five. Guys, we've seen some excellent offensive output. Yeah, great momentum for them offensively. Dunn kicks to Levine. Shoots over Brogdon. Levine can't hit. All right, look, that's what they want. The ball is in his hands in the post. Just didn't have the touch that time. And he comes up with the deuce. And it's six points for Eric Bledsoe. His touch has been terrific this quarter. Most of what he puts up is going down. I'll go to David Aldridge, who had a chance to talk with head coach Jason Kidd. Well, Kevin, they're going to keep it simple tonight. He wants to run everything through the low post. He told me, physically, we're the stronger team. And we need to use that strength to our benefit. Back to you. All right, David, thanks. It's Kumbo on the wing. Lopez passes to Anda Dacumbo. The Bucks working the ball around. Lopez, a screen on Levine. Here's Brogdon. Here's Lopez. How on the play, basket counts, so it'll be a three-point play chance. Whatever drawbacks Lopez may have, scoring in the post isn't one of them. 
He is a nightmare for opposing defenses to deal with down low. And we all know Brook Lopez can score in the post. And he might be just as valuable working from the elbow and running in that pick and pop action. One shot, gentlemen. And Brooke Lopez with the ability to face up and Greg post up. High post or low. I mean, his passing and shooting ability give him that versatility. He is a load to handle for defense. Now here's Parker. He had a 27-point outing in their last game against the Lakers. Oh, don't forget his rebounding work, too. They couldn't contain him on the glass. Bucks have gotten five of ten shots to drop in this game so far. Right at the 50% mark. No good from Bledsoe. For Chicago, they've gone six of nine, shooting it well. Holiday against Middleton. Dunn kicks to Levine. Milwaukee with the rebound. Not the tightest of D on him, but not the best of finishes either. The offensive rebound. Onda to Kumbo passes to Brogdon. Basket counts. And those are the kind of nice inside looks they've gotten here in the first half. Dunn kicks to Holland. Dishes it to Dunn. Parker outside, find the shoot. Look, you can't defend down low much better than that. Refuses to give him an easy path to the buck. Brogdon kicks to Bloodsoe. Here's Honda Takumbo, and it's in there. And they've repeatedly probed inside in the first half, guys, and, and it's paid off. Now, here's Dunn. A look at his stats. He averages a bit over eight points a game. Outside Holiday. To the inside. And the dunk by Lopez. A seven feet tall. Lopez makes Duncan look easy. Once he's close to the bucket, forget about it. Here's Zonda Takumbo. 20 points for him last game against Brooklyn. And a beautiful two-way game for him. Blocking a couple of shots, giving the opponent something to think about. Timeout called the Bucks, And as the coaches go to the clipboard to outline their strategy during the timeout, the players getting a chance to rehydrate with some Gatorade. That's key to staying fresh all the way to the final whistle. And, Kevin, it really is. And every one of these players knows it. They're all making sure to stay hydrated. It's impossible to play your A game if you're not getting enough to drink especially uh, towards the end of games when the physical toll of a long contest really starts to add up. So Chicago ends up going with the new group. Markinen passes to Zipser. Feeds it to Markinen. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give him two chances at the free throw line here. Chris, you certainly played with some colorful characters during your career. Which players do you think are the biggest personalities now? in the NBA. Wow, I mean, when you think about the biggest personalities now, I mean, I, I think about a guy like Westbrook that's so soft-spoken, but his game is so loud that, you know, you, you have to take notice. Uh, Draymond Green, I think he's always been a guy that has never shied away from a microphone or the limelight. He's another guy uh, that comes to mind. And so, and, and, and I think, you know, you always have to look at LeBron just because he garners so much attention, uh, just because what he does is always going to be uh, headline news, that, that he has fun with it. And so those three guys come to mind when, when I think about the biggest personalities in the league. Second free throw, no good. And marketing is a perfect candidate for that stretch four. Outstanding at pulling the trigger from deep and not afraid to go inside and bang with the other bigs. 
and it's Delvidova missing. And right from the start, Kevin, they've been pounding the glass. Most of those 50-50 balls also going their way. There's the pick. Payne kicks to Portis. He tries for three, and that one's good. Zipser. Now Delvidova. Currently averaging almost six points a game. The dish to Ilias over for the three. Markinen pulls it in. The Bulls leading by four. And here's Payne looking for his first basket still in this one. Here's Portis. The Bulls need to get a shot off here. And it's out of bounds. Last touch by Ilias Ova. Let's go to the 2K leaderboard. Here are the team leaders in steals. You need to play heads up against these squads. Lebuck second. You can't get careless with the basketball against this group. I mean, they'll pick your pocket. And, and no surprise to see them in the upper echelon as far as steals. And they turn over the 24-second buzzer, signaling the shot clock violation. Bucks trail by four. They need a bucket in a big way here to regain some confidence. There's a good screen. Maker with a screen for Ilias Oba. A tad short, but it's good off the front iron. Artful use of the screen there. Gains the separation he needs for a good look. Gain with it. He dishes it to Markinen. Here's Zipser. Knocks down the three ball. Zipser's got a couple of threes now in the first with the Bulls. Yeah, that's two bombs in a row from long range. Now here is Della Vadova. Tight defense on him. Ilyasova can't hit. Yeah, they got that one, but early on, it's, it's really been a struggle for them to secure that defensive backboard. Zipser. He has six. Passes it to Kilpatrick. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. And a look now at the four areas where shots can come from. The paint, mid-range, and shots from deep all broken down for the Bucks. And they've been avoiding those deep threes. They're capable of knocking those shots down from long range, but so far they, they've really been reluctant to let it fly from that free throw line extended three-point shot. And he makes the first. And some players, you just kind of know that they'll end up in coaching. Just the way they approach the game and, and go about themselves. Chris, having played Hoiberg during your career, did you ever see him becoming a head coach? Well, it's not as easy to tell your opponents uh, versus your teammates. Uh, didn't have a really close relationship with him. Didn't know uh, or his expectations. Never played with him. So, uh, no, I, I never saw it coming. And for many years, the Chicago Bulls were viewed as a model franchise. Always were competitive and in the hunt for a title. But this current version just can't escape turmoil from within. Off target from three-point range. Bucks trail by six. Now the Bucks moving it up. Here's Snell. And the call will be against Thon Maker. And that'll be his third foul so far. Now the Bulls with it. They've outscored him 10 points to two during this run. Here's Kilpatrick. Banked in off the glass. And the Bulls lead by eight. And the Bulls finally committing Greg to a full rebuild this last offseason. Yeah, and, and trading Butler was the start of it. I mean, they, they got some young players to build around and a pick. And it won't be an easy road ahead, but one they felt they needed to make. Here is Ilias Hoban after Chicago picking up a basket just moments ago. And they can't allow him too many open looks like that. that that's just inviting trouble. Payne kicks to Portis. Now here's Payne. He's been patient so far. Nothing yet on the scoreboard. And it's Kilpatrick missing. 
And they have a narrow edge here in rebounding early on, and you wonder what kind of a role that's going to play moving forward. Here's Payne. It's not going to go for him. And Milwaukee the other way now. And there's the feed to Della the Dope. And so he earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact, and he'll shoot two. And Chris, you played during an era against a team that many consider the greatest of all time, that 96 Chicago Bulls team with Jordan and Pippen and a great roster. Just thinking back to that team during that second three-peat, what was it like when you were going up against that Bulls team? So tough to play against that team. Jordan, uh, arguably the best player that's ever you know, laced them up, and Pippen was so tough offensively and Two rebounding. Shots. Rodman as well on the boards, and then you had guys in, in a system that was you know just just really too much uh, you know it's hard to say uh, of course in my opinion having played against them, they're the best team of all time but uh, Bill Russell once told me you know ghosts can't play so don't get caught up in comparing uh, errors that you really can't prove it so uh, yeah of course they're the best of all time to me but uh, it's fun watching these young kids play today. Both good from the line that time. He's not making any mistakes up there today. Another solid trip to the line for him. Now Payne. He hasn't scored yet. That I'm sure will change. Portis kicks to Payne. To the paint. Here's Markinen. Off to a good start as he hits his first shot attempt. We've got 33 seconds left in the first quarter of the game. Eliasova a screen. Here's the three. Markinen pulls it in. Chicago leading by five. And here's Payne. They set the pick. There's the pass to Kilpatrick. A three-pointer is right on target. Kilpatrick's got six points. Della Vadova. And no good that time. And so it's Chicago in the driver's seat, up eight points at the end of the quarter. Defensively, they have gotten after it, contesting every shot going up. Back right after this. the second quarter beginning in just a moment and before we move on what do you guys think about what we've seen so far from the Bulls I think they play great D and, and not giving up anything easy early on yeah closing down the lane closing out on perimeter shooters interesting first quarter now Chicago has gone three of five from beyond the arc so far tonight setting the floor for the Bucks. Elias Ova out there with Tony Snell. Then there's Maker. Then it's Matthew Delavid over. And it's Connaughton in at the, the two spot. And good passing, setting up a lot of these buckets right now, Kevin. That's been the key. In the corner, Snell with it. Elias Ova a screen. Snell kicks to Maker. Here's Connaughton. And they come right back with their own three-pointer. And that's how you answer back. Trading bombs the last two possessions. They're going out with him. Payne dishes to Markinen. Pass to Portis. There's the screen. Down to five on the shot clock. No good with the elbow jumper. Bucks trail by eight. Maker passes to Delavidova. Ilyasova a screen. Three-pointer. That drops, and it comes off an assist from Delavidova. Ilyasova's got eight points. And when you've got a big man who can shoot from distance like that, what a huge advantage. Down low. Stolen away. Nice job to interrupt the alley-oop attempt there. And we're now about a minute and a half into the second quarter. Connington kicks to Snell. Ilyasova a screen. The baseline J. Snell, no good. The Bulls leading by five. And he could not get that one to go. 
A lot of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. Chris, you've been broadcasting as an analyst for the better part of a decade now. Talk about your process when you personally prepare for a broadcast, prepare for a game. Wow, that's crazy. It is almost the better part of a decade. It, it doesn't seem that long. I can't believe I've been retired that long, but... I know. I know. <laughs> right? I, I can't... Wow, time flies, I can't man. Either. But <laughs> what the... I have to thank so many of the guys that I've worked with that have taught me kind of how to do it but my process is kind of like a basketball game or when I play uh, there's a scouting report uh, I look at the scouting report I look at the stats for this season I compare the two teams I look at this if, if I was playing for team a what would we have to do what would my role be and then I look at it for team B I love coaching and, and management and looking at all those things and so it gives me a chance to play all those roles and then come up with the game plan and then from there uh, I just try to make sure I kind of stick to the rules of, of commentating when we start the game and and go from there but my preparation is really to get deep into the numbers of each team but then more importantly how they've been playing at that context of what I did as a player and, and I know what the teams are going through along with all those analytics and then kind of just let it fly and hopefully the fans have have fun watching it, but that's my process. Now, here's Lopez. He had a 15-point outing in their last game against Brooklyn. And at the defensive end, are you kidding me? Blocks four shots, an intimidating presence throughout the game. And when I watch Eric Bledsoe, I, I really feel like he's at his best when he's kind of prodding a defense. So hard to keep away from the rim. When he Take attacks, it just Take opens everything else Two up shot. in his offensive game. First one falls for him. And Greg, as you said, the aggressiveness Bledsoe has going to the rim is a key for him to getting those open shots then on the perimeter. And the team is at their best when he is in attack mode. Uh, I mean, opens up lanes for cuts as you just can't keep him out of the paint. He knows when to drop off a pass after he beats his opponent as well for an easy score. Chicago leading by five. Dunn dishes to Levine. Lopez a screen. Back to Holiday. Just five on the clock. And so he draws the foul on the shot. A trip to the line to shoot two. First trip to the free throw line for him in this one. And this season, he's maintained very good form at the line, shooting at about an 83% clip. Free throw good from Holiday. He makes one of two that time. And one thing you notice with Giannis is just how much better this team is with him on the floor. What he brings on offense and defense is as huge as any player in our league. And Greg, with Giannis, the team is so much more dangerous with him on the floor offensively, and the numbers back it up. Yeah, Giannis, one of the few difference makers who can impact the game on both ends. Causes a ton of turnovers with his D, but also can facilitate uh, or carry a team with Blue his shot. offense. The free throw drops for Eric Bledsoe. That one goes in. Two from the line that time. 
And for those of you just joining us, we're almost two and a half minutes into the second quarter. Levine kicks to Holiday. And Parker, here we go. Count the basket. Parker's got seven. Now, look, that's just great composure at the rack. Think about it. He just slipped over to the other side, laid in the reverse under some intense pressure. Bucks trail by six. Bloodsoe outside. On to Kumbo, a screen on Holiday. Holiday against Middleton. Back to Bloodsoe. Here's Honda Takumbo. Milwaukee, no good that time either. Chicago leading by six. Levine for three. It's in. That's his third field goal of the game. He's three for five. And Dunn is fantastic at moving the ball around, finding teammates with ease. Lopez a screen. Here's Bledsoe. Loses his man off the screen and lays it up and in. Bledsoe's got five points in the quarter. Chicago's gone to three-point range seven times tonight, knocked down five of them. Dunn kicks to Lopez. Screen by Parker. Here's Levine. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. And certainly while the injury for Zach Levine and his ACL was devastating, Greg, it's good to see him back on the court, and he seems to be on track to making a full recovery. And Kevin, still amazing to me to see just how far the medical community has come in terms of treating ACL injuries. Uh, uh, Levine is such an athletic monster. To lose even a little burst would have been huge. Fortunately, though, with modern medicine, it's going to allow this guy to make the most of his potential still. And the first one drops. And good on the second, so he makes them both. Well, we see so many of these players, Chris, in the NBA reach notoriety very early in their careers, sometimes even while they're still in high school. What was it like growing up as a star athlete and all the hype that surrounds it? You were the number one high school player in the country coming out. Well, you have to stay focused. You know, I didn't grow up in this era of uh, social media and everything. I can only imagine that pressure now, but really you have to stay focused. You have to realize that you're just in the middle of your goal. You're not a celebrity or a star yet, no matter how good you are on that level. Take a break. Everybody Take a break. in the NBA has been Two the shots. best player on their team at some point in time. So things are going to even it out. You have to stay focused, stay goal oriented uh, in school and in sports. And uh, hopefully the best things will happen. And if you're lucky, like I was, you have some real good people around you, whether family or friends. Yeah, good mentors, right? That's got to be important. Yeah, you definitely got to have good mentors, whether it's coaches that can encourage you to spend all your time on the court and or whether it's uh, friends and family that encourage you uh, to stay focused and not kind of get caught up with others that may not have uh, a focus or a love or a passion right now. So you just really need good people. It takes a village and for guys that are feeling so much fame and getting so many accolades at such a young age. It's hard to handle as an adult. Just imagine trying to handle that as a kid. So you definitely need a lot of good people around you in your corner to help you succeed in life. Dunn passes to Holiday. And he banks in the layup. And the Bulls lead by nine. And you're not going to pass up that kind of look. Middleton on the wing. Corner shot. And a great assist by Blunso as that one goes in. Bulls have gotten four of the first five shots to fall in the second quarter. Outstanding shooting. And it's done in the corner. Excellent D there from Bledsoe. Bucks trail by seven. Here's Honda Takumbo. No good from outside. Chicago's gotten both of their three-point attempts to go down here in the second quarter. Here's Holiday, and the Bulls tack on two more. And for Milwaukee, they're shooting at an even 50% from the floor here in the second quarter. Ante Takumbo dishes to Middleton. Back to Ante Takumbo. Launches a three. Ante Takumbo can't get that one to fall. 
A frustrating start to this quarter. Time. Here's Holiday and the rejection by Adetokounmpo. Here's Brogdon. Bloodsoe outside. Here's Lopez. Drains the 19-footer. Lopez has got seven points. The Bulls leading by seven. Dunn kicks to Parker. In the corner, it's Levine. Lopez right side. And it's sent back by Lopez. And now here comes out of the Kumbo leading the break. Yeah, he just punched the ticket on that one. That'll get the job done. Powerful two hand jam. Done with it. Now guarded by Bloodson. Levine passes to Lopez. The rebound by the Bucks. Lopez has got his third rebound tonight. Bloodsoe outside. Middleton outside. Kicks it to Lopez. Six on the shot clock. Bloodsoe outside. Goes back up. Got that one. The Bulls' lead has been cut to just three points on the basket from Lopez. And, and you just hate to give up those second chance points. Uh, it can be discouraging, frustrating, but you only have yourselves to blame. Fox out. Drops in the tray. Uh, he just looks more engaged this second quarter. A far cry from his disappointing play in the first period. Andre Kumbo with the ball. He has six. Bledsoe left side. A second chance effort. Lopez. Chicago grabs the miss. They've led by as many as 11 points. Ian Levine, here we go. Second shot opportunity. Lopez with the bucket. And now it's an eight-point Bulls lead. Oh, well, Lopez is terrific on the offensive glass. I love seeing him use his long arms to haul in the Bulls. Bledsoe kicks to Brogdon. Lopez, a screen on Levine. And that one's good, Brogdon. If the screen's better, that attempt's a lot easier. But he nails it even with the D still up on. Levine dishes to Lopez. Lopez, a screen. Here's Parker. Some solid defense from Andacumbo. The D doing everything they can to cut him off on his way to the hoop. And stolen by Dunn. Here's Parker, and he banks in the layup. Parker's got four this quarter. Well, he's been the safety valve for them on every possession. So dependent. Middleton against Holiday. Bloodsoe outside. There's the lob into the combo, and out of bounds is Chicago Games possession. Now let's take a moment to see the teams that lead the league in field goal percentage. In fourth, the Bucks. So patient on the offensive end. I mean, they're not going to force shots, and it's that selectiveness that's yielded such an impressive field goal percentage. Portis, he's checked in for the Bulls. Paul Zipser comes in for Justin Holiday. Ilya Sova, he's checked in for the Bucks. Pat Connaughton comes in for Malcolm Brogdon. Zipser's shot is off. Just tentative in the paint, lacking a little bit of confidence, allowed the defender to recover and contest that shot. He's got to be wondering, how did he miss that? I mean, he had all the space in the world. Here's Dunn. Or three, Levine. Rebound, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Bucks trail by eight. Here's Ilya Sova, and Ilya Sova throws it down. Well executed, and then you love the strong finish. So many fast breaks now ending the three-point shot. Good to see them taking it to the rack. Dunn passes to Portis. Screen by Parker. Dishes it to Levine. Four on three as they bring it up. Here's Honda Takumbo. There it is, his third basket. He's taken seven shots to get those three. And started hot, and he's only gotten harder. The Bulls leading by four. Outside, Levine. Here's Portis. Nice work on the board. It's paying off with the basket. And without looking at the scoreboard, you think 
they were the team trailing and trying to fight their way back. Ilyasova a screen. Bloodsoe kicks to Ilyasova. And looks like the illegal pick was set. Yep, that's right. That'll get their attention. Yeah, still moving a little bit when he set that screen. He'll argue that he was set, but I, I really didn't think so. I think you'll probably see more arguments on those illegal screen calls than just about any other play. Maybe the charge call, but guys never think they were moving. Looking at who's out there now for the Bucks. Makers checked in for Lopez. Tony Snell comes in for Giannis under the Kumbo, and it's Matthew Delavadova in for Eric Bloodsoe. Portis can't get it to go. Bucks trail by six. Fast break, Milwaukee. One thirty-five left to play here in the half. And how about marketing using his size and reach on defense? Great timing in terms of being able to get up and block shots. Oh, the feed was perfect. The timing, the placement, everything was right on the money. And so it's Milwaukee with it. The Bulls getting the bucket. Snell dishes to Maker. That one's not going to go. So the Bulls will take it the other way. They've led by as many as 11 points. They get to take on the Blazers at Portland after this one. And that one will start off a three-game road trip for the team. Here's Connaughton. Looking at his point production, he averages almost eight points a game. That is good. And the Bulls' lead is cut down now to just six in the basket from Snell. And they're passing the ball very crisply here. Here's Kilpatrick. He had a 12-point outing in their last game against the Lakers. Yeah, but it wasn't all about himself. He also did a great job at creating for his teammates. So many assists tonight. Now here is Della Vadova. Connaughton passes to Della Vadova. They set the pick. He kicks it to Maker. Tries a three. Offensive rebound. Chicago leading by six. You don't have to be in a hurry. They can hold for the last one. No question. It's not easy to be patient, but you really don't want to give up an extra possession. Here's Portis. Here's Markinen, and it's denied. Della Vadova. No good on that one. And so it's the Chicago Bulls with a six-point lead at the end of the quarter. And they've done a phenomenal job down low. So many of their points coming right at the rim. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge standing by courtside. David. Kevin, thanks. Zach, strong first half for the team. How do you build this lead? Keep playing hard on defense, the main thing. Getting out, running, getting stops. Continue to play with pace and, uh, you know, do what we do off the offensive end. We're good at that. Zach, coach, really likes the way you played, I'm sure. Thanks. Back to you, Kevin. All right, Dave, thank you. And time now for the halftime break with the third quarter soon to follow right here on 2K Sports. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. And what an amazing performance the hometown fans are witnessing here tonight. Ernie Johnson, Kenny the Jet Smith, and Shaquille O'Neal. Chicago holding the upper hand after the first two quarters. They have a six-point lead. Kenny, some perspective, please. They were really efficient on offense. She had the basketball well, great shot selection. That accounted for a high field goal percentage in the first half. And now, Shaq, let's get your opinion on Milwaukee. Ernie, they're taking way too many threes. The offense has no rhythm. They need to go back to the drawing board. Maybe try to get a little bit more transition, more off the pick and roll. Anything other than shooting that three. It's not going. And it's just about time now for the third quarter to get underway. And welcome back as we take you for a cruise up the Chicago River. Beautiful, beautiful Chicago, Illinois. Welcome back, everyone. The second half about to get underway, and it's been a close one so far. Eric Bledsoe really making a difference here. His points production thus far off the charts. It's only been two quarters. Just a great effort for him for the entire half. Yeah, right. I mean, the defense hasn't had an answer for this guy yet. Just too skilled, too driven thus far. Here's Dunn. 
Dunn and Levine, their backcourt. Parker out there with Robin Lopez. And it's Holiday in at the small forward spot. And that's the group for Fred Hoiberg as we begin the second half. Now, here's Dunn. Six-point game. And it's sent back by Bloodzone. To the inside, Ande Takumbo. Parker with it. Now guarded by Middleton. Here's Levine. Basket good. Levine's got the first basket of the third quarter for the Bulls. They are just killing them on the interior. Ande Takumbo kicks to Middleton. Near the three-point line, it's Budso. And the rebound goes to Lopez. Lopez has got six rebounds in the game. On the wing, Levine. Again, Levine missing. Bucks trail by eight. And one of the pieces of the Jimmy Butler trade this offseason, Zach Levine finds himself as a prime building block for a rebuilding team. The Bulls see him as a star of the future. And rightfully so. Even given the fact that he's recovering from the ACL surgery, Levine is young and can grow his game with the team. Hard to get fair value for a player of Butler's ability, but, but Levine is a great place to start. And they're one of four here to start the second half. Bledsoe kicks to Lopez. Holiday against Brogdon. Lopez left side. And a great assist by Anadokounmpo as that one goes in. On to Takumbo's got three assists now in this one. Now here's Dunn outside Holiday. Makes it off the glass. Holiday's got ten. You could never have enough offense in the low post. Bucks trail by eight. Guys, they're looking for a way to score here. Yeah, they've had a tough time taking the lid off. Shots good by Bloodsoe. And that's what you give up when you don't fight over the screen. A lot of times your defense is your offense, your offense is your defense. This is poor decision making right here. You can't let them have that. Whoa! <laughs> He's going to put that one in his scrapbook. Insane dunk. And now they're starting to rub it in. Build up a lead, and here we go, baby. It is showtime. Plenty of daylight on that shot. 11 points for Giannis Antetokounmpo. And I love the momentum he's building. Last game, he, he was just as dominant. And defensively, you know he's feeling good right now. And, and, and as the opposing team, you better adjust your scheme accordingly. The Bucs have gone 3 of 6 in the third quarter. 50% from the field. Rocked in the pass to Bledsoe. An easy layup after coming off the pit. And now, just a three-point Bulls lead. Did anybody see any defensive presence on that play? I mean, he's not going to blow that layup. It was wide open. Dunn dishes to Lopez. On the wing, Levine. There's the pick. Six to shoot. Here's Holiday. Here's Lopez. Second chance shot. And it's sent back by Lopez. Here's Honda Takumbo. I mean, watch Giannis out there. He just looked unstoppable, Greg, at times. The way he's able to attack the rim, the blend of size, uh, speed, and length is just unparalleled in the NBA. And it's the movement that throws you off with Giannis. One step, and, and he's gone from the three line to the rim. There isn't any way to stop someone that skilled who's that big. first one falls yeah getting to the line more and more proof that Giannis is consistently being aggressive he's perfect from the line this time Chicago's gone 6 of 12 from outside. A very nice 50% mark, shooting the three ball well. Dunn kicks to Holiday. Screened by Parker. 
And again, unable to change momentum here. And now in transition is Bunso. Here we go. And onto Takumbo slams it in. Oh, you got a feel for a guy getting dunked on like that. I mean, he's got no shot to stop that unless maybe he can pick up another foot somewhere. Dunn kicks to Levine. Parker outside. And it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. And a look here at the shot chart for Bledsoe. Well, this is what you wanted to see from him. I mean, he's not settling for anything and is going right at the defender, taking the ball to the rim whenever he can. And the attitude he's had on offense is keeping his team flying around as his energy is contagious out there right now. Shooting two. And that one falls for Parker. And Parker drops a boat. Bucks have gotten five of eight shots to fall for them in the third quarter. A nice 62% from the field. Lopez a screen. Bloodsoe outside. He kicks to Lopez. The shot off that time. Chicago has gone 0-2 from deep to start things here in the second half. Levine for three. Here's Parker. Good for another bucket. He's made half a dozen now, six for eight on the night. I mean, he is just demoralizing his opponent right now on the backboard. They didn't want anything to do with him on that possession. Almost like they were just giving up on the play. His dominance on the boards is really putting them on their heels. They want no part of this man out there tonight. It, it took a long time for him to get that first triple. Let, let's see now, though, if he can get going. Holiday, a screen on Middleton. Dunn kicks to Levine. From the arc. A rebound by the Bucks. On to Takumbo. has got double-digit rebounds now in the game. Pass to Brogdon. And it's sent back by Lopez. Well, Lopez is out there to set the tone defensively. I mean, he's a wildly strong defender who sends shots back with authority. For Milwaukee, they have shot 10 of 11 at the line. Nice work so far for them. And they've shot the ball well this season in, in, in terms of their attempts. 81%. Here's what Milwaukee's going with right now. Thon Makers checked in for Chris Middleton. Tony Snell comes in for Malcolm Brogdon. And it's Matthew Dellavedova in for Eric Bledsoe. Bulls trail by three. Now here's Payne. He's averaging a bit over five points a game. And it's in after a nice bounce off the right side. The Bucks have gone seven of twelve from the floor since coming out of the break. It's out of the combo on the wing. Lopez passes to Onda Dacumbo. And Onda Dacumbo slams it in. Man, he sure can get off the floor. He's one of the best in the business, absolutely. Here's Kilpatrick. He's got nine. It's good from long range. Markinen's got the game tied up here for Chicago. And, and I tell you what, Markinen has already mastered the art of the bank shot. Loves getting it up there and knocking that one down. You have got to be in his space if you want to disrupt his rhythm. Oh, and he went for the two-hander on the slam using some muscle. Some urgency from him there, sure. And you could see him give a little nod and then just burst to the rim for the alley-oop slam. A pair of teammates, Greg, with a terrific feel for each other. Milwaukee's gone two of two from long range in the third quarter so far. 
Della Vidova kicks to Anda Tacumbo. Lopez a screen. Anta Tacumbo dishes to Lopez. Here's Markinen. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. And now let's highlight the highest scoring teams in the NBA. In fourth, the Bucks. And how about the year they've had offensively? This is a team that can put points on the board in a hurry. Always fun to watch them play. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. And he makes the first. Ilya Silva, he's checked in for Milwaukee. Pat Connaughton comes in for Giannis Antetokounmpo. So he gets them both. Now Delavidova. He feeds it to Snell. There's a good screen. Over to the left wing. Rocket six. Here's Connaughton, softly drops in the floater. Connaughton's got five. Well, the floater's a tough shot, even when you're that close to the bucket. Payne kicks to Portis. Feeds to Markinen. Some nice ball movement by the Bulls. Payne can't hit. And the Bucks, they're shooting 47%, pretty solid. Inside, it's intercepted. Here's Kilpatrick off on the layup. Oh, great effort there. That's how you defend the paint. Yeah, he has that capacity. He knows exactly where to position himself to protect the rim. Jacks up a three. Drains it from beyond the arc. 12 points for him. And look, the D has to be talking out there. They can't make threes that easy for them. Bucks trail by three. Here's Connaughton. He's got five. Here's Maker. Not really his range, and it's off target. The Bulls shooting at 46%, making some buckets. Payne passes to Zips. Goes to the reverse layup and pops it in. Now it's a five-point Chicago lead. Milwaukee's gone two or three when they ventured outside the arc in the third quarter. Here's Connaughton. Floats one. And the dunk by Maker. And great effort on the boards. And what a mean yeah. <laughs> that was, Gary. I mean, you just will not see him ever quit on a play. That guy is a handful. You've got to have a body on him, Clark, at all times. And how relentless is this guy if you're the defense? He's the first one you're looking to block out there. Bucks trail by three. And here is Della Vidova. The dish to Maker. Passes to Connaughton. Lent it go with a three. Here's Ilyasova. Chicago grabs the miss. The pass to Zips. To the left side wing. Kilpatrick. Again, Chicago. 156 left to play here in the third. They could use a big shot here to get this offense going. Too many empty possessions right now. They need the basket. Elias over a screen. Elbow shot. And that one comes up a bit short. Not easy to miss a clean look inside like that, but he manages to do it. Zipser kicks to Payne to the left wing. And the basket by Kilpatrick. 
Kilpatrick's got seven points here in this quarter. A uh, fruitful possession, just doing what they can to extend the lead. And that's what you have to do. Stay in the moment. Keep grinding. Now the feed to Delavido. Pass to Connaughton. Shot clock at six. To Delavido. It's rebounded by Portis. Portis has got five rebounds tonight. Hate to say it, but he's dragging them down. Not a single bucket. Loving the energy right now here in the third quarter as they try to take control of this game. Well, this is how you come out at halftime. Really motivated to push this game out of reach. Stay focused. Ilya Sova dishes to Delavido. Let's a floater go, and it's good on the way in. 41 seconds left in the third quarter. Here's Kilpatrick. He's got 18. That's in for his eighth bucket tonight. A hot eight for 11 shooting so far. Just no resistance inside at all. They are feasting. This is a straight buffet. It is. It's a big one. And load the plate. Free throw, good from Delavido. And even though they're down, they are putting on a show at the free throw line. And so he makes both from the line. And it's the Bulls with the ball. Seven-point differential. Payne kicks to Portis. 15 seconds left to play in the third. Here's the screen to the middle six on the shot clock trying to go for an alley-oop but excellent defense and anticipation there to stop it that's a two from Delavidova that one wide left and so it's the Chicago Bulls bringing the quarter to a close with a seven point lead looking good at this point but wanting more we've got more NBA basketball coming your way in just a minute And now a sneak peek into the huddle with Coach Jason Kidd. It's not going to be easy. Come on. There's nothing is. It's not going to be easy. Let's go. Defense. One, two, three. Defense. Jason Kidd moments ago in his huddle getting everyone focused and amped up to take on these next few moments. Yeah, and an emphasis really on forcing stops. Something Coach did very well back in his day when he was playing. Let's see if they can live up to his expectation. Welcome back. Fourth quarter action starting up. 2K Sports, happy to have you with us. On the court for the Bucks. We've got Maker. Elias Zoba out there with Tony Snell. Then it's Matthew Delavid over. And it's Connaughton in at the shooting guard position. Here's Parker. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. Impeccable from the line since halftime. Two shots. That's good from Parker. Some changes for Chicago. Robin Lopez is checked in for Markinen, and Chris Dunn subbed in for Cameron Payne. The box also changing it up. Malcolm Brogdon comes in for Pat Connaughton, and Eric Bledsoe subbed in for Matthew Delavidova. And Parker drops them both. Bucks trail by nine. Bledsoe with it. Ilyasova a screen. 
Bledsoe right side. He dishes it to Ilias Hova. Snell kicks to Bledsoe. Just five to shoot. Ilias Hova a screen. And here's Brockton from the arc. And it's Chicago with the rebound. Parker's got rebound number five here tonight. The shot by Holiday, no good. And for Milwaukee, they're shooting 43% from the field. Maker kicks to Bledsoe. Eliasova a screen. Off the screen. Here's Maker. Nice work on the board. It's paying off with the basket. That's what every team needs. Guys getting after it on the offensive board. Pass to Kilpatrick. Now, here's Dunn. Guarded by Bledsoe. Dunn shots. Good. And the Bulls lead by nine. And Dunn is spectacular. Seeking contact and getting it. Even more impressive that he makes these shots as well. Brogdon kicks to Bledsoe. Over Dunn. Bledsoe with another miss. And you know what? You can't get a better screen. Freeze him up beautifully, but he just fails to capitalize. <laughs> the best laid plans, right? Well, I'll tell you right there, though, that's one they'll take every single time. Pretty much all of their buckets coming from inside the paint now. They need a bucket in a big way here to regain some confidence. Kicks it to Maker. Here's Ilyasova. And the rebound goes to Lopez. The Bulls leading by 11. To the inside, here's Parker. And the dunk by Parker. A one-man show offensively. And that's almost always good news for his team. For those just joining us, fourth quarter here. We're just over two and a half minutes into it. Now a timeout called by Milwaukee. And with the tide running against them, needs to talk it over with his guys. Man, they straight up been getting smoked over this stretch. They really need to refocus here. Robin Lopez, a solid big man who can clean up the glass and Greg get you some points on the other end. And Robin Lopez might not have great range now, but, you know, that could change. He says he's uh, working on a three-point shot, and his logic is that since his twin brother, Brooke, can make threes, it can't be that hard. <laughs> Maybe. Chicago making a switch here. Levine's checked in. Milwaukee also making some changes. Lopez, he's checked in for Thon Maker. On his under to Kumbo, comes in for Ilyasova. And Middleton subbed in for Tony Snell. Let's go now to the sideline and catch up with David Aldridge. Well, I was able to listen in on what Jason Kidd went over with his team. He was not happy with their play. He told them, we're getting out worked out there. Simple as that. We've got to dial up our effort. Kevin, we'll see if they have enough to get it done. Holiday up and in on the layup. And they're beginning to just flat out fall apart defensively right now, especially on the interior. Here is Bloodson. Guys, their comeback bid had better get started. I don't know, guys. It's going to take a pretty big run to get back in this one. Here's the screen from downtown. Second shot opportunity. And there's the basket. Whistle blows and a chance for a three-point play. Going to the line for one. Nice work to get in position for the rebound and the putback. He has no off switch. Fourth quarter of play, and over three and a half minutes have gone by. Parker outside. Lopez sets a screen for Parker. And it's done in the corner. Off target from three-point range. Bucks trail by ten for three. Middleton, a shot that time, not on target. Holiday against Middleton. And Holiday kicks to Dunn. Now here's Levine. He's tightly guarded. And he drops it in from the low post. 
and the Bulls lead by 12. And he can smell blood in the water. Excellent finish. Oh, yeah, up by double digits. They're trying to keep the momentum, keep the foot on the neck. That's his focus right now. Here's Lopez, and that one hits back iron. That's a great job to converge on him inside and prevent that easy look. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. It goes on Chris Middleton. Now, gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. First one falls for him. And good on the second, so he makes them both. Bucks trail by 14. Out of Kumbo up top. Six to shoot. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Chris Middleton. That's foul number two for him. The Bulls leading by 14. And it's done in the corner. How on the play, basket count, so it'll be a three-point play chance. They're finding lanes to the hoop now with consistency. Five buckets in a row from the paint. And the game and the culture of basketball has so many subsets. One of those is the basketball shoe culture, the sneaker culture. Players competing almost as much, Chris, for style points as they are for actual points. Oh, yeah, you know, and, and I love to say that I was part of that culture. You know, uh, with the black socks and, and with some different shoes that I've had at the NBA. It's a lot of fun, man. It's, it's something that your fans can relate to. It's something personal. It shows a personal side of what you have, your type of design. So, you know, you're very fortunate if you get your own uh, kick deal. And uh, I, I was fortunate. It's a lot of fun, and, uh, and the fans love it. Now, that was a sensational feed. He hit him right on the move. Out to the wing. Parker outside. Rebounded by the Bucks. Middleton with it. And Holiday picks him up defensively. Now here's Dunn. Here's Parker. Another miss by Parker. Bloodsoe outside. Dishes it to Antetokounmpo. Passes it to Brogdon. There's the pick. Lopez a screen. Near the three-point line, it's Budzoe. And a great assist by Brogdon as that one goes in. And you can see there the defender gets caught up on the pick. Team ball. Great execution on offense. Everyone working together. You wish you could have that on every play. Lopez a screen. Parker passes to Lopez. And it's sent back by Lopez. Middleton against Holiday. Lopez. It's hauled in by Dunn. Chicago leading by 12. And Lopez has it in the corner. Gets the three-pointer to fall. Well, look, Lopez doesn't hesitate once he gets the ball. I like seeing him be aggressive on offense. Lopez sets a screen for Bloodsoe to the inside. And Brooke Lopez, the bucket on the assist by Bloodsoe. And that's now 19 points for Brooke Lopez. And, you know, he's enjoyed the kind of day you expect in terms of shooting the basketball. He can bring them right back into this game. Dunn kicks to Levine. Out to the right wing. Lopez dishes to Levine. Milwaukee with the rebound. Middleton's got seven rebounds in the game. He's trying to help him add to this lead, but he just can't find his touch. And they'll keep possession. 
Lopez, no what? Chicago has gotten just one of four three-pointers to go down for them here in the fourth. Again, Levine missing. And, you know, he's a threat from deep, no doubt about it, but it just has not been there for him tonight. You might want to change your game plan a little bit offensively. Lopez with the block. How done. Back to Levine. Parker outside. Back to Levine. There's the triple. Again, Levine missing. He's still looking to get into a groove this court. And it's sent back by Lopez. On to Takumbo. It's good on the putback. And, and, folks, he did not luck into that one. He knew just where he wanted to be to grab that backboard. Middleton against Holiday. To the paint. Here's Lopez. And Lopez throws it down. Well, go ahead and just <laughs> hammer it home, why don't you? He might not be the athlete that some of the other big men are in this league. But, my goodness, he still knows how to finish. Well, I tell you, a lot of it for him, it's about attitude. When he's playing like that, he has a chip on his shoulder. This is what he can do for you. And as they're trailing in this game, they're trying to stay in it with the triple. They're shooting a lot more of them than they did in the first half. Chicago calls timeout. And one of the things I love about Chris Middleton is his decision-making. You know, he doesn't force shots or passes when he has the ball and just lets the play develop. And that's why coaches trust him so much. A chance now to recognize our Jordan player of the game, Jabari Parker. And he's just been crushing it from the field tonight, Kevin. Whether it's been on open looks or with the guy draped all over him, he just hadn't missed much. With his percentage in the sky-high range, they've had no choice but to make him their number one option on every trip. He would finally had enough of their losing streak, and it's going to take something special to regain some kind of momentum. And his effort has been very special tonight. And with Middleton and his decision-making, it's true for both his scoring and his passing. For the amount he facilitates, he has great efficiency. Low turnovers, solid field goal percentage, and his passing gets better every year. And it's out of bounds to the Bucks as Milwaukee retains possession. Bucks passing it around. Ande Takumbo kicks to Lopez. And that basket is going to count. Goaltending the official call. So close to getting the block there. You, you can live with those calls because you'd rather have a guy playing aggressive instead of playing it safe. The Bulls leading by eight. Outside Levine. He kicks it to Lopez. Levine sets the screen for Lopez. Don misses. Really surprising to see the huge edge they have in rebounds given what the scoreboard says. It's Brogdon on the wing. Doesn't go that time. So the Bulls will take it the other way. At one point, they led by 16. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. It goes on Giannis Antetokounmpo. The first free throw is good. Both free throws good from Holiday. Bucks trail by 10. Ludzo passes to Brogdon. He feeds it to Antetokounmpo, and the call will be against Robin Lopez. That's his fourth foul of the contest. Stolen by Holiday. Oh, and here comes Holiday all alone. Oh! Goodness. Wow. My goodness. 
goodness, that was absolutely filthy. Oh, nasty. This building is stunned. He dug deep, Greg, into his bag of tricks there. Bledsoe kicks to Brogdon. Feeds it to Antetokounmpo. Over Parker. Middleton dishes to Bledsoe. Lopez sets a screen for Bledsoe. Four on the shot clock. And two free throws coming up. Unable to get that one to go with all the content. Yeah, just nice strength there. And then just off with the shot. And he's good on the second. And every point is critical now. You can't afford to let these opportunities pass you by. Now, here's Dunn. Guarded by Bloodsoe. Dunn kicks to Levine. Rebound, Milwaukee. Lopez has got rebound number 13 for him here tonight. Leaving the rest of the field in the dust. But while he's out there making the play, everyone else is watching. Solid individual effort right there. It's so about to Takumbo, and onto Takumbo slams it in. And that's how you make a steal count. Turn it into a quick slam at the other end. It was really a case. It looked like Greg Anthony right there, if I, <laughs> if I can say so. It was really a case of a great defensive play triggering some instant mm -hmm. offense. Oh, well, that's because it was terrific anticipation. Also, the quick hands, a lethal combination. Lopez passes to Holiday. Connects from three-point range. And the Bulls lead by 10. And now as the clock ticks down, this is going to end up as a solid victory here for the Bulls. And they're fully in control now, but there were some tense moments, I thought, for them uh, throughout this game. Uh, listen, they certainly weren't coasting, despite what the score looks like. I love the way they came together, though, when everything started to look a little dire and really put the hammer down. So looking at the season total, this will be their 17th win. And they will walk out of here feeling really good about themselves today, guys. A big win over a conference foe they'd split their previous two games with. And a great team effort tonight, helped in large part with contributions and the nice night it ended up being for Jabari Parker. Well, he had a hand in just about everything they did tonight. I mean, he just didn't take a single possession off on either end. He was the complete package. Lopez, no luck. Man, right play, wrong result on that one. Generally, you knock those down. Well, I, I like the decision making. I mean, that's a shot you want to keep taking. And a good example there of why it's important to change ends quickly. Yeah, talent in this league has it so that now pretty much every team can push the pace. You have to get back on defense. Two shots. He hits the first one, and that makes it a seven-point lead. And Dunn does a little bit of everything out there. Scores the ball, distributes it well, and also pounds the glass aggressively. Second one is good. Getting both at the line, and it's an eight-point game. Well, they're really making a point of keeping the ball moving around. That's the key. The D can't focus on one player, and no matter what anybody tells you, that ball will always move quicker than the defender.
He drops the first one, and that narrows the gap to seven. He hits both from the strike. And so they foul intentionally. And no good is the first free throw missing for him. We'll see if he can nail the second. And he ends up making the second, and that makes it a seven-point lead. Now a timeout called by Milwaukee. They're down by seven. There's 25 seconds left to play here in the fourth. There's 25 seconds left in the fourth quarter. What a battle for that rebound there. He did an outstanding job in getting position and hauling that one in. And here's Levine. Now the dish to Dunn. And so it's Chicago winning this one. They didn't make it easy on themselves or their fans, but in the end, everyone's satisfied. I mean, there were some times that, that momentum shifted, and, and, and especially early on, but let's give this group a lot of credit for that stick to itiveness in terms of finishing out and executing that game plan. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. Thank you, Kevin. Jabari, you guys really got after it tonight. Is this the kind of mentality you want to impose on the other team? Uh, just as long as I stay aggressive. You know, don't rush the game. Don't get outside of my game. But uh, continue to play hard. Well, you got your teammates looking for you tonight, Jabari. Thanks. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David. Great interview once again. And that'll do it, folks. For Greg Anthony, Chris Weber, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan. Thanks for watching the NBA. Presented by 2K Sports. See you later.